Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai, wherever you are watching or listening in the world. Thank you for your patchy patchy Jess. <laughs> yes, my amazing guest today is very used to applauding announcers, people's comments, and uh, generally you're going to be really good at looking interested in whatever I say because you are a Japanese talent. Very nice. So a talent is... Um, a celebrity on Japanese TV. This is one of the jobs that Jess does. But I met her. I met you when you were, we were both mere, mere recruiting industry beginners back at Wall Street Associates. I remember in the wall building um, oh, with our dear friend yeah. Naomi, also from New Zealand, along with you. And yeah, so we were working in the same HR team. We were. You were my manager. Yeah. Feels like a lifetime ago. Yes, a while. How long ago was it? I remember I finished just because I had to give birth in 2008. So probably about 2000 and when? Four, five, maybe. Right. Wow. Mm, yeah. Quite a while back. Quite a while back. And so, and, and so now you've got three kids. You've been yes, busy. Yes. Three kids. And your um, youngest is going into Shogako? Yes, from April, Japanese. Right. Japanese Shogako Elementary School starts in April. Which is, and is um, your your oldest, is she sixth grader or? Uh, middle, first grade of middle school, but this, the school goes until high school. So actually my son and my daughter are both at the same school. So one oh, is right. in the elementary section and one is in the middle school section. Okay. Yeah. yeah my daughter's just about to go into last, the like sixth grade of elementary. Oh. So oh. I, I'll, I will come back to you as my senpai on this one. We will, <laughs> you can tell me about this shift to junior high school. Oh, anyway, we're not here yeah. to talk about my educational worries. We're here to talk about Jess's amazing life. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, what's been keeping you busy last couple of years, apart from obviously being a kick-ass mom. <laughs> yeah, other than the children, I think, uh, well, I started Kyudo uh, about three years ago, which is the martial art of Japanese archery. And um, yeah, just been working towards, you work towards gradings, which are called shinsa, the examinations. So working towards passing that, that base level grade, which is called shodan. If you can get that, then you can take your bow and arrow and go to different dojos all over Japan. You can shoot anywhere. So as long as you have that qualification, um, yeah, it can take you to different places, interesting places. So the first sort of little while, perhaps the first year I was just working towards trying to pass that exam. Right. Yeah. 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 So Kudo is one of the, the big things that I, I want to talk to you about today. But what I think is really fascinating about your life is, you know, you have all these different elements, these mm. different ways that you you contribute. Right. So you're you're working as a talent on, on Japanese uh, media. You're a writer. Um, and just so everyone knows, Jess is not doing this work in English. She's doing this work in Japanese. Amazing. Um, and uh, also, I love Saitama. You're a, a prefectural oh, yes. ambassador. That's right. Yeah, I am. A couple <laughs> of years back, actually, 2018, I was given the position of Love Saitama ambassador. Which love is Saitama a, ambassador. What a title! Do you, you have a character? I I have a um, no, but the the prefecture itself has a mascot who I'm I'm mates with. He's my boss. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They gave me a tusky, you know, the official thing that, that Japanese people wear when they're in official position. What is so it? Like, like yeah. a sash? Yes, I got a sash, which is, yes, one in English and one in Japanese. So depending on the audience, I can switch it up. Nice. Uh, and yes, it's just promoting tourism and promoting things that I think personally, they give me quite a lot of freedom. So things that I think are interesting and wonderful about Saitama. Mm. So mm. using... Um, using English and using Japanese, just uh, towards sort of the inbound industry, the tourism industry, using English, showing interesting things, uh, places to see and do in Saitama. And then just recently because of, uh, well, uh, Corona, yeah. not really a lot of travel happening. Um, I was given an extra role, which is the PR. So sort of um, just showcasing different things uh, how can I say dental shokunin? So 
artisans that mm. are based in, or craftspeople that are based in Saitama that make different things like tatami or tabi, the, the sock-like things that you yes. put on your feet that go with kimono. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of different craftspeople in, in Saitama, as I've found out. So um, one of my new projects is just going to visit and talk to them and find out what sort of drives them and all about their the the way that they make uh, their different their different things like tatami etc. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, I might ask you to be a talent scout. Back to our recruitment roots, and uh, if you see anyone who looks like they would like to do a podcast or <laughs> YouTube channel in English, talk about their ikigai and how they get uh, through their craft. Um, yeah, put them in touch with me, Jess. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Yeah, I'll, sure. you know, we'll talk about the contract and the commission later on. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very nostalgic days of that. But yes, now let's get on to Kudo. So I have been, this is what the main reason that I invited you to be on the show, because I've been watching uh, on social media, like a weird stalker, um, this <laughs> shift in the story, the things that you're doing. Yes. Um, when you first started with Kudo, just kind of coming up. And then now I bet I'm, I'm not on Instagram, but I can imagine if I like, <laughs> if you look back at your Instagram history, there's some like, just, there's a lot less of this and there's yes. a lot more of bows and arrows and, and yes. these horses, bows and arrows on horses. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but also I'm just, also, I feel like I'm seeing this, I don't know how to describe it. Like, um, just this maturing into this amazing warrior uh-huh. woman um, who's totally yeah. comfortable in her body, got this quiet confidence. It's just absolutely amazing to see. And I, I love, love every post. <laughs> so please continue. But I want to go back because, you know, some of these these hobbies and things that people have as, as an ikigai, you know, a reason for their existence and motivation gets them out of bed in the morning. Some people say, well, I've I didn't start, you know, doing this when I was three years old or in my teens. Like, is it mm. too late? And of course, Jess, you're very young, uh, but we've we've both <laughs> got a few. We've got a few decades on, so this is a newer right. hobby. So, yes. and how how? Yeah, I guess it's not even really a hobby now, but it started as a hobby. So, tell me mm. how it started for you for okay. Kudo. Like, what was the first introduction to Japanese archery? Right. Well, just uh, going back to childhood, and that well, when I was five. I have a photo of me wearing, which I've already put on social media before, Robin Hood, which my <laughs> mum has fashioned for me with her sewing machine for my dress up birthday party. So a five-year-old birthday party, you know, princesses, this, that, and the other, I wanted to be Robin Hood. And so I mm. had my bow and arrow with me. And um, from there, sort of, I never really tried, I mean, I tried archery a couple of times, Girl Scouts, Girl Guides, yeah. for them in New Zealand. So I did archery a little bit, but it sort of petered off. And then I came to Japan and approximately 11 years ago, going to Hanami in Saitama, actually to go to see the cherry blossoms, I stumbled across a, do- uh, across a dojo, which was open on one side, so you could see in. And that's quite rare, actually, with mm. dojos, because you don't get to see inside you can hear probably what they're doing however being able to watch it it was really like it's sort of I just stopped for I mean time stood still <laughs> I wasn't sure how long I was stood there for however I watched for a while and I was just really overcome with a sense of how calming it was even just to be a, um, a just watching right. just viewing it made me really really sort of calm down and it was so quiet and everyone was moving so slowly but they had these weapons and I was like it didn't quite I was like what this is they've got bows and arrows and quite a few women were there and um they were wearing hakama uh the traditional kudo uniform and so I thought wow there's quite a few women like that's if that's a martial art like I really had a sort of strong stereotype of martial arts being quite a male dominated sort of a thing Mm. especially here in Japan and we're talking 11 years ago. So it was quite a while back and my Japanese wasn't that great. So I wasn't sort of sure how I should go back and search for what I had just seen. So I did a Google search of Japanese archery. And uh, at the time, to be honest, 
the amount of resources for Kyoto on the internet were quite few and far between. Mm. So I uh, just due to timing of having children sort of in succession and my Japanese not really being up to scratch, I never really started. However, I saw it and decided like this is amazing and I really want to try, but where do I, it's finding the entrance. And I couldn't find the entrance even after going to the Kuyak shop, so this is like the city council, the district council, the borough council, I went and had a little ask around, like, where do I start? I met with like question mark eyes, <laughs> like they have no idea. <clears throat> and so then, you know, if the city council doesn't know where I, the local dojo is or how to start, like how am I supposed to find it? So anyway, I gave it a little bit of time. I was having children, waiting for that that timing. Because, you know, when you start a martial art, you want to be able to sort of give it um, the proper amount of time that it needs. And if you have children at home during the day, it's like, when do you find time to be able to do that sort of thing? Right. Yes. Yeah. So I was introduced by chance uh, to a beginner's class about three and a half years ago. A friend said sort of in my dojo where I am, there's a beginner's class and it's once a year. And this is very standard for Kyudo dojos. They only do it once a year. Uh, and you can come and start if you want. So that was, you know, somebody had just given me the entrance into mm. what I'd always wanted to try. So no, it's it like, just took eight years. years. <laughs> I was just like, yes, of course. Oh, of course, of course. So I, I went and it was amazing and fabulous. And it was everything that I thought it would be. Uh, and then, yeah, I just have a look back. Right. But I love that. <laughs> you had this like first introduction, observing it like 11 years ago. Yeah, we have a little look around. And, and that's actually one of the, the challenging thing, I think, with many great like volunteer organizations or these more mm. traditional pastimes in Japan. They don't have great websites, even in Japanese, let alone in English, oh. right? Like the, the presence oh. is, is really not there. So as a, it's hard for anyone to mm. enter in to it right mm. to get the information and then you say like okay the beginners class there's only this one window yes. once a year so if you are not like in the mix to know about that and know about the timing then yes yes, yes. so the stars aligned and you were, right. you were able to to go and <laughs> and when was when was a sort of transition and maybe there wasn't a transition but I feel like there was a transition mm. as a <laughs> in my yeah. voyeur stalker position of you online the transition for really. you from this is a fun hobby to I can't I can't stop doing this yes yeah because I feel well, this is where you are now kind of obsessed yes yes a total mania but um I just uh just to put a bit of running and jogging in there because I used to run yeah. now it's past tense so this this strange sort of a situation happened where I would be running several times a week and I would be like, oh, yeah, look, there's Jen. Jen's running. And me, I'm running. We're runners. And it's like <laughs> it went from uh, running several times a week to being a weekend runner. So this is once Kudo started. And so I had found this release that was different to jogging and running. Mm. That that um, the more I went to my Kudo practice, the less I ran. So I was getting this, uh, this stress relief or I was – I don't know, I was just so amazingly refreshed after mm. practice that little by little, sort of without my, it wasn't on purpose. However, probably mm, about two or three months ago, I realized oh, I've just stopped running. I haven't run recently. Um, and I need to get back into it, to be honest. Uh, however, <laughs> it sort of fell, it fell over what running was for me, which was just to get out of my own mind and have a stress relief and, listen to the music on full blast and just go for 10 kilos. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this, yeah, I just, it sort of um, took over everything, including the running that I was doing. So in a good way, I found myself just really relaxed and I don't worry about anything anymore. And I don't yell at the kids and um, I don't know. I handle difficult situations a lot, a lot more easily. Mm. And my, I don't know. I just, it helps help to slow my life down 
a lot because I'm quite like go 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 personality wise as well. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't answered your question at all. But no, yeah. but I think you've given <laughs> a, you've done a great politician's answer. You've answered the question you wanted to answer. Um, I can tell that you're a professional <laughs> to being interviewed and being on 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 the screen. Like, hang on, this is a story I want to get across. No, I think that's brilliant, Jess. I was properly like. Oh, Love this story. I do want to, as a coach, challenge you as to whether you need to go back to running. Maybe it served its purpose in your life. Um, and if, yeah. if you feel you want it, then go for it. But um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting to say, okay, I was a runner and now I'm not. And, and to be yeah. like able to just let go of that, that, that former self, right? Right. Just like, you know, we used to work at the same company and neither of us work there anymore. It's the right. same type of that. That was an identity and it, it was there for us and we got things out of it and lessons learned yeah. um, and experiences had and all of those things, friendships made. Um, yeah. But maybe it's something different. And I think this is very interesting when like mm. the, with the discussion around Ikigai and purpose and people thinking like, oh, I have to have this one thing that's, you know, guide me all through my life. And it's like for a while, like running was part of the, right. that for you. Right. And, and something else has come into your path and has taken a different space, filling a different thing for you. So I think that's a really useful takeaway mm. for people um, listening and watching. And for me as well, yeah. to be like, do I, do I still need to do that? Do I still need that identity? Or maybe there's another object of my ikigai mm. that's, that's calling me more strongly and is going to bring me a different type of, you know, um stimulation or joy um or mindfulness is kind of what i'm hearing coming out of your kudo oh, yes. definitely mindfulness yes yeah, so for people I... like me who don't know much about kudo can can you describe what a bit about the sport but then also like how, how to describe this question sorry i'm thinking of what i've watched when i've see, seen you on your videos <laughs> So I had a very different uh, impression. Like you were watching going, oh, it's so slow and graceful. And, this. and I was like, get a move on people. Yeah. I, guess, I think maybe I, I should guess, try to. I get that though. a lot. Especially, yes, no, I, I get that a lot. Yeah. From other people who do archery, like, <clears throat> sorry, regular archery. Yeah. It's sort of like if you were trying to fight a battle or something, you'd be dead by now. I'm like, yes. <laughs> There's it's no an easy man. joke to make and I'm sure that you have a great answer for it so what do you say to those haters who say you'd be dead by now well it's a martial art it's not a yeah I'm not fighting a battle so it's just it's all about yourself you're not really worried about anything else so mm -hmm. you take the time that you need to take basically right yeah it's just with with the breathing that you do so you know really really just natural and <laughs> It's, um, yeah, it's like taking breaths, basically. So it's not trying to get out as many arrows as you can, can do because it's not a sport. It's a martial art. So a lot, a lot different to trying to hit the target and trying to get points and this sort of thing. The mm. target, you can just imagine it's not there, basically. It's all about you and yourself more than the actual target. Oh, interesting. So when you are being judged, you know, for the different levels, oh yes how how is that decided oh yes what if i hit on here uh, okay so so for the first two you, you don't need to hit the target however you need to sort of be able to show that you have a certain amount of control over the equipment uh so the arrow needs to go into the other cheek which is the the soil which is around the area of the target okay. There's a curtain above and there's grass below. So if it hits on either of those, then you're out. You know, you can't, you don't get to pass. Right. However, uh, there's a whole dance, if I can say it's a dance, that happens yes. with four other people and you have to do it in, in time with four other people that you've never met before and you're a certain position that you find out on the day. So it's just really, really bloody difficult. <laughs> But you know your dance and you know the way that it happens. However, other people's breathing is different speed to yours. So you sort of have to uh, match the person right at the front. So if they're fast, you need to get everything done quite quickly and it makes you a bit flustered and that sort of thing. So if you're not sort of organized and au fait with the steps that have to happen, then you do get quite nervous and things can sort of, you have a few disasters, you drop your arrows and people break strings and, this sort of oh, thing goodness. happens but um, 
Yeah, I the just, last like, one. Caught, caught a view of myself, like listening, like gobsmacked, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you turn up and, and so there's four people you don't yeah. know, different dojos or different classes and stuff. Right. And so, and so you, everybody follows the person in, at the front, the front number one yes. position. Yes, and that's the one that I really don't ever want to be because it's right where the examiners are sitting. Like they right. can see up your nose. It's so close. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you're the boss, like you're the leader. You set the, the pace for the rest of the team. Right. That, you know, hi, nice to meet you. Okay, let's go sit our exam together kind of thing. It's a bit like if you're lucky, there are the same people from the same dojo as you. However, yes, it's, it can be sort of nerve-wracking to say the least. Oh, wow. Wow, I had no idea. It's so interesting. And then, you know, looking at, so there's the leadership piece, right? If you're position number one and then just like mm-hmm. how to synchronize right on That's the line and then point. having as well I feel like you you have to then also have the mindset that we we win or lose together yeah definitely right so sometimes when in sports as you said because I love the way that you're really strongly saying this is a martial art <laughs> right that so I assume that all four of you can pass right in this Yes, so it's it is relative to your own performance. So you do it is pay, based on individual performance. However, the it's a movement as a team. So if there is one person that is extremely slow or extremely fast or drops stuff, then it screws everything up timing wise for everybody else. Mm. So in this case, it's a very team oriented sort of situation. However, the actual performance when you're shooting yourself, that's that's uh, the technique and everything like that. That's individually based. Mm. So there is both sort of coming into play, which is quite tricky. Yeah. So what do you do um, to the weakest link? What happens to them? <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness me that I've never had to experience anything like that before. So I've heard, I can hear they'll have two teams of four doing it at once. Sort of the other team behind me, I can hear someone's hit the, the curtain the, that hangs down. Yeah. I can hear someone's hit the soil or they haven't or they've dropped you hear a big sound it's an aluminium arrow so it's like and they're like wow it's like oh goodness me someone's dropped their arrow that can't be good it's just like thank god it's not me (laughs) you just have to concentrate on your own sort of thing happening but is there is there a sort of you know an altercation afterwards do people (laughs) <laughs> well, of course, probably not, right, in Japan. Um. Well, I, uh, no, no, yeah. definitely not. Unless you actually, you know, just bit, like, hit them with your bow or trip them up or something like that. There really isn't. Because once you get to those, the higher levels, third down, fourth down, yeah. fifth down, you're honestly just in your own world. Right. Uh, and you, you sync with everybody automatically. So, wow. Yeah. So you became... It's that uh, cycle of competence, you know, from unconsciously incompetent, you don't know what you don't know. And so you're moving into this unconsciously competent. Yes. Actually, the last uh, exam that I had, the dojo was shut for the week before the exam, which is honestly like the biggest nightmare because mm, you can't you need cram. I'd be right. Um, <laughs> so on the slide, out, of, out into Tokyo every day in this dojo, you know, an hour and whatever drive away. I was just there. But actually... It worked out well. There were no teachers there, nobody to give me like things in my ear leading up to the exam. So I was just like in my own world for the last week. Uh, I went to the exam on the day and everybody sort of like, well, you know, in the city, all the doors are shut. You know, I mean, no one's going to get very good. Sort of nobody had high hopes for anything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would just be glad to get one arrow in. I need to get at least one arrow in to be able to pass. But I was so, uh, the first time ever that I've honestly like stepped out of my mind. I can remember what happened. However, I don't, I can't in detail remember, if you know what I mean. So I was very like, I must have been so relaxed having, I didn't see anybody, any of the examiners around me or anything like that. I just remember, yeah, I must have been like doing it properly. I must have been doing it properly is what I think, because I can't quite, all I remember is that it hit the, that the first time. So I was like, oh, shit, that's great. Awesome. I've hit it. And then, um, yeah, the rest kind of went from there. But it was the first time I was sort of conscious. Con- I was not unconscious, but I was just like an yeah. automatic pilot sort of doing mm. the thing. I wasn't just nervous at all. I was so surprised. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah. I just enjoy like a flow, flow state. So um, uh, I think we were talking before about uh, Dr. Hasegawa's definition mm-hmm. of Ikigai. So one is individual's consciousness is a motive to live. And the other is about being in the here and now. And it sounds like in that moment, you were totally yeah. oh, nowhere else. Like, yes, it was so amazing. It was honestly, so I was just like, God, I wish someone had videoed that. There was nobody allowed to come and watch because of Corona. So I just like, oh, I would have loved to see like what my face looked like at the time because, yeah, now yeah. I'm thinking back on it, I cannot remember details, like what I did where and how. And I remember somebody asked me straight after I finished, you know, did, how did it go? Like, did you make any mistakes with the footwork or, or like this, that? I can't remember. That's what I told I don't <laughs> actually know. I don't remember. I can't remember what happened. But I remember because you can hear when it hits and it was so bright. Mm. But I can't, can't remember seeing exactly where the arrow went. So but I, I could hear that it was hitting. So I guess I, I did okay is what my answer. But I couldn't <laughs> give details about what exactly <laughs> had happened. So, yeah, Amazing. it was a fantastic experience. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that is how many years since you started then? That's three. three uh, yes, about three years. Three years. So like to be into, which is not really that long to be doing something. No. Right? Yes, that's right. When you have people who, well, the standard, you know, around me is about 10 or 25 years is, hmm. is, is sort of an average that people have been doing it as, you know, in Japanese bukatsu, bukatsu right. for their uh, middle school and high school. So they've been doing kudo since they were wee, like, yeah, 12, 13, 14, yeah. 15. Hmm. And here's me starting, you know, in my late 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, that's amazing. I love it. And I, I love, I actually love, I think it's magical that it wasn't recorded. Yes. I think it makes it just this amazing, Why Why yeah, you know, and it's this, uh, this amazing moment of just being. Like it just, it just happened and it was there and it will live in your memory forever as actually not living in your memory at all because you're totally <laughs> out of your body experience and nothing. Right. But that that by not having any record of it in the physical world, yes. it becomes this like ethereal magical moment. I'm so hooked. I love this story so much. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm like my whole body is goosebumps uh, to yes. be it's gorgeous it's gorgeous. Yeah. But Jess you um you didn't stop there and you decided I know uh, let's get on a horse, weirdo. <laughs> What's, what? what? <laughs> so when I saw this picture, so, now what is it called? I always get yes. the name wrong, so please tell me. Okay, so, so uh, there is a traditional one where they ride on the horse and they shoot arrows, which is called a Yabu Summit. And Yabu Summit is just a little bit different to what I do. Yabu Summit is uh, certain schools of archery um, from feudal times, samurai, they would do it to show off, showcase the talents, and it's not just to show off uh, a little bit. <laughs> yes, so they still do it uh, even now, and mm. usually performed for matsuri or jinja as a a certain gishki, so a certain ritual, especially right. for shinto ceremonies. The one that I do is called sports yabasame. So there's sports, sports in front of it. Yes, so. Um, they don't like getting that confused because it's a very different sort of a thing. However, it is still horseback archery. Mm. And uh, yes, it's just uh, due to Corona, I had always wanted to try. So that gave me a little kick up the bum to sort of search into it and have a wee look. And somebody actually on Twitter recommended. So Twitter is a fabulous source of information for me. But um, it, they gave me an introduction to a place in Odawara. So quite quite far away from yeah. Saitama, about it, about two hours away. However, mm. you don't need any sort of experience, and they will pop you on the horse with a bow and arrow on the first day. So I was like, this sounds amazing. They will let me ride and shoot on the first day. I'm there. I'm going there right now. So I booked and went there, and it was it was so fabulous, so amazing. It was so much fun. That seems like such a different approach from. Um... <laughs> Japanese learning experiences that I've seen where it's yes. you know observing and attend a lecture and then yeah. after like 17 million classes you finally get to like touch the thing um, <laughs> and then you may accurate. yes 100 right accurate. I remember so. my my daughter went to this swimming lessons right the local pool 
and they were just you know doing all this stuff around and then we went to um like an all-inclusive holiday in spain where there was the swimming lessons as well Stop. and so when she when she yeah when she came back she's like oh, this swimming lessons rubbish mommy i don't want to get like we're never in the water we sit on the side and like one person's allowed to swim but when i was in spain we were just like in all the time <laughs> you know in, yeah, the, yeah. in the shallow yeah, end comparison right yeah. right just like get in the water have a go and um, I mean she still can't swim very well either way but um, oh, okay. it was just interesting <laughs> that because she had the chance to compare like two very different teaching styles yeah that's very interesting yeah and uh but I felt like in that four or five days of swimming mm. that we did in Spain where she was just in the water and they were doing stuff for the whole 45 minutes rather than 45 minutes of something you know, yeah. Kai, so like your warm-up exercises yeah. and then like waiting on the side yeah. and then doing oh, the crab stuff yeah she she learned so much more so that's so cool that they're like you will be yes what, what if you've never ridden a horse before they don't care no it doesn't matter and, and you've never held an arrow before they don't care no so it's a whole day and they'll and they'll go through and teach you how to shoot oh. in the first couple of hours and then they'll do okay let's do a bit of jobber so let's do a bit of horse riding and so then you'll pop on the horse without any bow and arrow and do your controlling horse okay and then you just add them together and go it's very like um but yes as you said usually traditionally uh with that sort of thing it's very like you do a shigyo so you do your training and you warm up to it and you warm up to it and then after a year or two years or whatever then you get to touch the horse or then you get back <laughs> Right. You spend so, a lot of time, maybe the first two years, like cleaning out the stables, don't you? Yes. That's what so, the... Yeah, that's right. So Yabasama is like this, like the real traditional Yabasama is like this. You'll be watching or you'll be helping. And there's just so many things to learn up until the point where you actually get on the horse and do shirt. Mm. Um, and for someone with three children and work, you know, to be honest, I um, don't have the time which is the part of the reason why I, I wanted to do something like that. However, this method, this way, really suits my lifestyle a lot better. So people that have time that can do that sugar, that can take the time and years to do that training, you'll become the Yabasame Archer, which is amazing. And you'll be able to do it, you know, in front of Jin, Jinja for their big events and that sort of thing which I think is wonderful but it needs to be suited to your lifestyle I think to, in order for you to be able to continue right yeah so I just I was just it was great found something that you know you can do it once a month and that's okay with them and you just pay as you go and if you want to sit an exam you can sit an exam or if you don't you don't have to and they will yeah work it with your level and if you want to go faster they'll let you go faster and like all that sort of thing so Wow, yeah, I think that's brilliant as well. That's like great business for them. Yes. Because I, I feel like as well, a lot of um, activities in mm. Japan, it's you have to be an expert and you have to be all in, which is definitely a great way to become really good at something, okay. right? And I think it's from uh, Bukatsu, Bukatsu, which I can't say either, yeah. from like club activities where you can only choose one club. Um but personally, I like to be able to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I don't need to be yeah. an expert at anything. I, I like variety is kind of my ikigai, yes. right? I don't want right. to just do the one thing. Um, and of course, it means I'm never a master. I'm never brilliant at anything. But I yeah. do a, a lot of things to a low level. But that makes yeah. me happy. <laughs> So. There was uh, actually, it reminds me of something that somebody at the dojo said to me was just that um, I, taking up sports the other summit, and actually I've started different forms of archery, Japanese archery. There's quite a few. Mm. So I've just, it's just sort of led me down the path of all these different types of bow sort of hobbies that I can take up. However, Kyudo, within Kyudo, there's several different branches and several different schools of archery. And uh, posting the Sports Yabusame up on my Facebook, I had people from my dojo say, you know, like, you know, they, they're sort of conflicted because how can you start that when you haven't even mastered this yet? And I was just like, kudo, you know, you can be 100 years old and you can keep continuing it and you're never going to master it. It's not like masterable, honestly. Mm. You get a title of master, which is hanshi, after you get to a certain down level. But to be honest, I'm just taking it sort of at my pace. I'm not 
trying to get the, all these different levels and, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just, I uh, wanted to, it's a different style of shooting. And as long as your brain can separate it, you have muscle memory for this and muscle memory for that. So, right. but some people, it conflicts them because they're, you know, you're, um, how can I say, uskunaru, like it's giving this 100%, you have to take it yes. away and put it into something else, but it's not really like, I think for us, it's not a big deal, but for people who are like, this is the only thing that I'm going to do and I'm going to master it. It's just like, it doesn't quite equate in people's yeah. minds sometimes, which is very interesting for me, just that different way of thinking. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's a bit like kind of you've cheated on Kudo, right? And you've been like hooking up with yeah. this sports exactly, like, What exactly. are you doing? Like you're, right? you're a bit on the side and you're supposed to be committed in this, in this relationship with them. And well, actually, yeah. I'm not, you know, in any <laughs> contracts. <laughs> There's no ring. Very, so yeah, this kind of thing. yeah, it's just very interesting, isn't it? That yeah. is, that is. But I also think um, good that people felt they could, you know, tell you that, make that yeah. comment, give you a yeah. different perspective. Yes. Um, it maybe didn't feel like that when you when you read the comment. <laughs> but um, actually, it's like, okay, yeah. There's, there's different ways that people are responding to this and different ways that people right. uh, want to live their life and how they want to yeah. feel about the things that they're into. But at the end of the day, is it hurting them? No. No, right. right. So, yeah, yeah. It's like, no. Okay, yeah, back away from the keyboard, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you come in and trying to like convert everyone to this this other other sport and yeah, which I don't think is your, your intention. And I, I love what you said as well that you don't have an end goal to be to be the master no right? that's right i mean it's it depends on the individual what's your motivation for doing this thing mm. that you're doing and what what's your end goal for doing this and you know of yeah. course it varies person to person and there are people who they just want to get that to the top and they just want to keep progressing through there and they don't need any other sort of things that are that will take their um, concentration away if they just want to be on that path which is right. fine so they're them and I'm me yes just as long as there's bows and arrows involved I'll be on it <laughs> you'll be on it <laughs> yeah. have you tried the um oh, what's it called there's one like um it, it's not a Japanese <laughs> martial art at all with and they've got like big big marshmallow sponges on the end Ah, you should, we should I've go and do that. I've seen it before. I, don't yeah. research, I think there's one in Chiba. Yes. 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 I but, did something in France. It oh. was such a laugh. So much fun. And you're like shooting at your friends and hiding yeah. behind things. Right. And yes, um, it's a very different skill set. <laughs> Fast and furious. Oh, and revengeful. Oh, it sounds really good. Because I know there's the one with the gun and it's paint. There's a paint. Yes. Ball. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not much of a gun person. So yeah. I think I'd like to try that one that you just said. Yes, I'll have yeah. to look into that. Yeah, that let's, have a, yeah. let's have an away day. Like we used to at WSA. Marshmallow archery. It's marshmallow archery. If anyone knows what we're talking about, please put a link in yeah, the comments nice. below. I feel like a proper YouTuber. Okay. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Notification. Nobody. Yeah. So... Um, Oh, that's really cool. I love that you've taken this, you know, just observing, coming to it. There's been a gap, an entrance, mm. have these amazing, like, out of body. I don't know even oh, how to describe yeah, it. Yeah. Totally in flow moments, expanding into other areas. And you said that it's really, um, you know, there's, there's in the dojo, of course, but you said how it's affected other areas of your life. Oh, yes. So what's, what's it been able to change in your relationships, dealing with stress, all of those things. You, you touched mm -hmm. on it a little bit, uh, but yes. I'd love to hear a bit more, like it's, what uh, that, skill sets or practices you have from it. Yeah, um, I think uh, really unconsciously the change has sort of happened, but the, the sort of it really came, um, came to mind when I noticed the amount of running that I was doing was decreasing. So that was a really physical and obvious change. So but up until then, I sort of really, it was a really unconscious change. However, feeling really, really refreshed after practices. Mm. And even if I wasn't results wise, I wasn't sort of progressing as fast as I wish I had been. Of course, there were frustrating times because remembering the movements and getting them correct and then um, 
arrows will be dropped on the floor and all this sort of thing, however. So you have a really big, there's a learning curve. But always, even if the practice wasn't that amazing, I'd still be really, really refreshed and really calm after finishing every time. Mm. So for the first little while, it didn't really, I didn't really notice it. However, when I got to the point where I sort of my running was getting less and less was when I noticed, hey, maybe my body is telling to need this other physical release of me. Maybe I don't need it. And why would that be? And then I had to like honestly sit down and like really think about it. It didn't, it wasn't obvious to me what had happened. Uh, however, I just got to the point where I'd be in the dojo, you're going to laugh, but like six times a week, <laughs> 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 which is probably the reason why. And it's not like oh, I'm utterly exhausted. I'm so tired. It's not like that negative sort of a feeling, but it's just like a really good, a really good, tiredness and a really but still refreshed and really relaxed and um yeah the amount that I was going was just in relation to exam prepare things so getting ready for the kudo exam and that sort of thing the amount that I'm in the dojo did increase yeah and the running did decrease so mm. that was sort of the really big change that I noticed however when I up, up on sort of looking back over the last couple of years there's no smacks and there's no there's no arguments like at all. Like I can't remember the last time that I've gotten angry at my children or yelled at them. So my kids are gonna be wanting me to start keto after this. <laughs> and I wasn't that honestly before that, or not really, but raising my voice, I'm not much of a an argumentative sort of a person. I'm very mm. like hewashugi. So I like just having that that peace and I'd avoid an argument. Um, I'm an argument avoider. Yeah. Um, yes. And however, however, yes, raising the thing, it would happen uh, on the daily, sort of getting, get ready for school, hurry up, and it'd be yeah, stressed so out. And, yeah. Oh, toddlers. And anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it, it did coincide with children obviously growing and they can do more things by themselves. However, I did sort of come to the point where I realized, yeah, I just haven't raised my voice for quite a while as there hasn't been a need to so I guess that really it changed uh, my approach to dealing with uh, stress mm. it was just a really big thing for me yeah I think uh, um, I haven't changed my eating habits or anything like that however and my my body shape in general hasn't really changed that much so like health wise I seem to be sort of the same or yeah however in a uh, in a peace, in a health, I think um, like mental health, seishin is very like balanced and very good. Yes. Mm. I feel like I've become a better person. It sounds like an advertisement for Kudo. <laughs> I think it's an awesome advertisement for Kudo or anything that, that's going to help people to feel that. Yeah. Right. We don't know what the, the side effects of this Ikigai type activity might right. be. And so yes. even though it feels like it's just a hobby It's having all these mental health benefits as well. And that's like kind of moving over into your relationships and to have better relationships with family and friends and all of yeah. those different things. Like I definitely feel we haven't talked for a while. Um, but if I think back to, but probably this is me as well, like how we both were when we like, especially when we worked together, Yes. like you were like, and me too, like really full on right yeah, like definitely. so much energy and we were a lot younger so maybe there's that too but I just feel <laughs> like you're really chilled a lot more chilled out there yeah, yeah you're just like yeah, yeah. it's like you like the pace the tone of your voice is like so much more coming from somewhere deeper in your body it's really beautiful so yeah. I think it's it could it could be age and gravitas you know just the changing oh, of times so or it could be the power of kudo <laughs> yeah yeah mm. it's really it's really amazing mm. to see yeah. <laughs> so jess if you had um uh, a message to someone who was thinking about it's kind of a hobby something i'm thinking of doing what would you give them as guidance to like should i do it should i not how how do i get involved with kudo or maybe with something else yeah just for starting a hobby in general 
Um, I think, first of all, give it a go. Go and, or go and watch it. Do kengaku so you can go and go and check it out and watch other people doing this hobby that you're interested in. And if it's, if it's in a location or, or a place where there's only this one place that you can do it, go, go to that place and check it out and see what the environment's like, see what the teachers are like or the instructors or whoever will be um, there and see what their personalities are like and the other members, what mm. they're like, because you'll be interacting with them if you start uh, this hobby. And um, the people that are in that environment that you'll be with, it, it's quite an important factor, I think, as yeah. to whether you'll be successful or uh, you know, emotionally successful and whether you'll continue in you and that sort of thing. The hobby is and trying is one thing, but just that environment, just go and check it out and see if it will be something that you're sort of a place where you're comfortable in. Mm. The other thing, yeah, definitely. Want it, where somewhere where you want to spend that valuable time. Yeah. And is your is your dojo quite close to you, did you say? Uh yes, about 30 minutes by car, 20 minutes by car, I think. Yes. Right. So I always feel like if it's something which is going to require you to I, I always look this is me because I'm basically yeah. lazy. I just want to have it <laughs> as easy as possible. Like the take away right. any, any limitations. So, you know, if I have to go 40 yeah. minutes on two trains, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to, no. I'm not going to go there. That's right. So It might sometimes be about, although you have the idea for a certain hobby, maybe you're looking for what the benefits are of that hobby and how can you get them in a way where you can like get hooked into this addiction for mm. Yeah, more regularly right because you, you have to be quite realistic about how it will work within your lifestyle because you don't want to get taken over by this hobby or maybe you do yeah um <laughs> but it's important that it works if you want to be able to continue it in the long run mm. then it needs to be something that works with your lifestyle and you know will you have children in the future or your children will move out of home in the future or so you have different stages in your life going forwards. How will this hobby work with those stages? Yeah. Or, you know, if it's too far away, if you do end up having to move, perhaps your husband in true Japanese style will get a job on the other side of Japan. You'll be ending up going with him or he'll go and leave you behind with the children. Will you be able to continue your hobby then? So it's kind of like you have to sort of think around about maybe what will be happening in the future or yeah. will the hobby work with you and your mm. lifestyle? It's important, I think, yeah. so that you'll be able to continue. Yeah. Although I would say don't let that stop you from taking the first step. Uh, the first step is important. That's why <laughs> just yeah, getting that the courage to go and check it out. Yeah. And having a wee chat to the people at the place is always very good. Yeah. And then if you could do like a final appeal for Kudo <laughs> as the Kudo ambassador, okay. you can also be side color ambassador. My, my, my inside kudo, hammer. Yes. So <laughs> my kudo appeal is that I did take a lot of time from from seeing it the first time to actually starting. So we, we're talking several, several long years. Uh, my, one of the main reasons was that I couldn't find that entrance. So uh, just going off that, I've started a kudojo in Akabane in Tokyo together with uh, senpai and anybody can come and anybody can try and it's on every week so this is a bit of an advertisement for my own <laughs> yeah. in the show notes i'm sure we'll yeah. have a link yeah yes. so it is called uh you you me and zen and yumi is the word for bow in japanese and you you, Me and Zen is that, that famous book, which is all about, um, we'll put a link into the book in Amazon. It's not my book, but it's all about, yes, check the description box for the. Anyway, so um, basically, if you're interested to try Kyudo, please check the description box below because we'll put the link to the dojo in there. You're We're so smooth, aren't we? we? <laughs> Anybody knows. And you don't, Japan, you don't need English. And yeah, you don't need anything. You can come with no equipment, no anything, and we'll set you up so that you can oh. try it. So yeah. Tebra, tebra kudo, hands free. That's right. We'll, yeah. we'll see you soon, Jen. Jen, you can come and try it. I, I might just do that. I would love to. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jess, for telling me all about your kudo journey. I love the um, transition, this like change of your identity 
um, how yeah. it has really changed your life. And I think it's a really inspiring story for people to think like, you don't know what this interest that might be out there and it might take you a while to start it. Um, like take yes. that first step and you can have these magical moments like Jess did as well. Definitely. Right. So thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, Jen. Bye.